Thank you. Sarah Josafo is a three-term member of parliament for Dom Kwabinya 7 as the first female deputy, majority leader and minister for procurement. The once glorious shining star that broke the glass ceiling and was held up as a symbol of hope and change by the new patriotic party has lost her luster and is now being shunned by her own. Ironically, the majority in parliament instead of the minority are asking for her seat, Dom Kwabinya, the politically cash cow of the new patriotic party, to be declared vacant. To the best of my knowledge, the law has kicked in already. Three things that must happen before a member of the CC have all happened. So I don't know how anybody else can change the situation. This matter has never been raised. Now that it has been is on the floor, it must be put to rest. If any ruling comes that does not make it clear. I think the appropriate way is to refer to this. The body that has the power to offer it. The daughter of the illustrious Apostle Kojosafo, founder and leader of the Crystal Asafo Mission, Sarah Ajasafo came into the public limelight then as a slender, innocent 18 year old homeschooled law student at the Premier University, University of Ghana. She became the youngest product from the university at age 22. In 2007, at just a tender political age of about 25 or 26 years, Ajua Safo took on a political colossus. Professor Aaron Mike Okwe, then MP for Kwabenya in the NPP primaries, but lost. She jammed the hurdle four years on, went on to win three internal contests against Michael Ninote Okwe, son of Mike Aaron Okwe. Her entry into politics saw her experience a meteoric rise, especially when her party came into power again in 2016. She served as the first female deputy majority leader in the seventh parliament under the fourth Republican dispensation, as well as the first female minister for procurement. In her private life, the mother of three would see things move in the right direction as well. But all would take a downturn for the one-time favorite who also holds the record as the fastest vetted minister under the Fourth Republic. She was the eighth minister for women and children affairs. Some political watchers trace the beginning of her troubles to that position, the minister of gender, children and social protection. It is speculated a memo terminating the appointment of the National School Feeding Coordinator, Gertrude Kwashiga, and the directive from the presidency to rescind same may have precipitated her misfortunes. After the directive to reverse her decision, the minister went owl after her permission on sick leave expired. In March, Majority Leader Oseche Menta Bonsu disclosed that Sarah Ajasafo had requested a month-long leave from the House. So, Speaker, so my thinking is that even what is captured here as a motion, the purpose of a motion is for the House to make a determination. And I'm thinking that really this is not for the House, it's not for plenary to make a determination. So I think that even locating it on the other paper in itself is, is unfortunate. But her continuous absence at a time when the legislature was almost equally split and all members critically needed will infuriate members of her party and the majority in the House. She, alongside a Central MP Kennedy Japong and MP for Ayawaso Central Henry Corte, were hauled before the Privileges Committee. Adwa Safo, then based in the United States of America, feigned innocence about the said invitation and made no appearances either in the House or before the Privileges Committee. Let's go on the phone lines now. Speak. To well, her last two appearances in the House during the heated E-Levy bill debate came with its own controversy and impersonation. Mr. Speaker, this is the House of Record. And as the former Deputy Majority Leader of this House, I was present in this house yesterday. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and to state categorically that I cannot call Honorable Okujeto Ablakwa, who is my friend on the other side, to dress the way I want. 
want him to dress. But months after the Privileges Committee completed its work, Sarah Ajasafo has yet to know her fate. There's no way that this can go without the whole house being given the opportunity to debate it. The heavens can come down, but that one, the whole house will have to debate it and come out with a decision. It's not the speaker that has to uh, declare the vacation of the seat. She returned to parliament, shunned but seemingly unperturbed. The House has risen for the festive break with no decision still made on her yet. And Sarah Josafo will hope the minority, more than the majority, be keen on keeping her around. Should Ajosafo have a seat declared vacant, she would still go into history as the first MP to have members of her party oust her from the legislature. At just around 40 years, life is just beginning for the soft-spoken but fierce Sarah Ajosafo.